We've got Content Box today. They're partnered with CastBox, millions and millions of podcast users. We're going to do an honest ICO review. My name is Michael Kubera. Let's get into it. This is also going to feature an interview. Bang! We will begin with CastBox. This is the parent company to Content Box, and CastBox is currently a podcast, on demand radio, and audiobook platform. So it currently has over 17 million users, as you can see on Content Box. It is the third application in Google Play ranking. There's 30 million US dollars that have been raised thanks to it, and 50 million pieces of audio. Audio. Those are incredible statistics for a podcast app, and we shall see those being transferred over to Content Box. This is an ICO. They're going onto the blockchain, but the team is simply incredible. So I later have an interview with Dr. Shaoui Li, and he was incredible to speak to because it was his actually first interview. It was one of my first interviews in a long while. So at first I decided just to do audio, and then we decided to move to video, but I cut snippets out of it, so a couple questions. And overall, speaking with him, the first 10 minutes I kind of was nervous about the project. Of course, they had a good team, the statistics and everything was there, but you always want to figure out if it's the real deal. And thanks to our conversation, I did feel much better about it. He was quite devoted, as is the rest of the team. I do want to make an apology for the fact that this video is late quite a bit. My scheduling went out of the roof. Unacceptable, I know. But here we are. Let's do this. We're on foundico.com. The description for Content Box was nice, neat, organized. It's a blockchain-based infrastructure that is going to change the digital content industry. Now, how do they expect to do this? They do have experience with the podcast app, of course, but they want to go ahead and have a unified payout system, a shared content pool, and a shared user pool, all right? And the problems that they're facing is that there's high cost of transferring consumers, limited monetization, Hey, 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 YouTube, we're looking at you, or no monetization at all, long payback period, so a content creator on YouTube usually has to wait 60 plus days for AdSense, now that is for the first month, and then the second month, then it reduces down to 30 days, but if you're part of an MCN, you still get the 60 day period, great. Some artists may never get paid, the smaller ones, depending on which content platform you're based on, YouTube, you're going to be fine, but there's smaller ones where you have a $50 minimum withdrawal period or you have to wait a couple weeks and people just get really dissuaded by that. But these are smaller players. It does make a difference in the long run, though, where with blockchain, you're able to use smaller increments and smaller fees. Data silos increase the chance for disputes and profit sharing rights. There's high operational costs for accounting, reporting, hosting, domains, all that. And content users, this is the most important thing, are not rewarded for content curation, usually. Steemit is one of my favorite platforms. It is buggy, it is glitchy, but that's one of the platforms that is a great model for how content curation is currently looking like. There's also ONG.social. My friend Nikolai is working on that, and it will be out. Hopefully, a better version of Steam it. But anyways, content curation with blockchain, that is where it's at. So these guys are currently in the pre-ICO, going from June 18th to July 18th. It is July 6th. They're 60% complete, and the goal of funding for the soft cap is $12 million. The goal for funding hard cap is $24 million. There's 750 million box tokens for sale, and each box token is valued at five cents. There is an airdrop program, and there is, of course, a bounty program, but the airdrop is interesting. They did raise already millions and millions of dollars. They have a reputable name to themselves. If you go to the LinkedIn, you're able to discover stuff like research scientist at Facebook, research assistant at Wayne State University for a couple of years. Now, of course, that was during university, but still 
to be working at that. It does take a little bit of experience and time and devotion. Six years plus experience in parsing, analyzing, visualizing, presenting terabytes of data, two years web development experience, six years of software dev. That is who we are going to be speaking with today. But the rest of the team, you can see some pretty big names here. Facebook, Xiaomi, Google, Wall Street Journal, again Google, Shazam, Motorola, FGC. And if you go down to the active advisors, founder at Fenbushi Capital, founder at Hydro, partner at Zen Fund, and then a couple professors and the investors. You can see the Zen Fund, No Capital, Block VC. Wow, there is quite a bit of investment here a lot a lot of funds which is a good thing that's how they got already the millions and millions of dollars of course as with any ICO I would highly advise you to read through the white paper before investing however some people may view this as a waste of time so it's pretty easy you can listen to the audio versions of white papers there's a plugin for Google Chrome you just have to look it up download it and then it reads the entire thing to you if you're really in a nick for time you can read it at double the speed and you're all good to go but it goes a little bit more in depth shows pictures of what it's trying to accomplish and, and then it gets quite complicated so for any of the developers software guys this is definitely good for you i'm not too knowledgeable with the formulas but hey anything with hash algorithms sounds good to me no, but seriously, just because it looks fancy, you still got to give it a good read through glimpse. I got this project recommended through a friend of mine. I trust his opinion. So I know that any project that lands on my desk from him, good pick. Now, just because it's a good pick, in my opinion, does not mean I think you should invest. But, but it does mean that I decided to throw this video out. Here it talks about the in-app token-based reward system. So you're able to earn box and if you're participating in the ICO also with the airdrop that's something cool to think about here it talks about the allocations 25% is going to the pre-sale 15% for the team the team is quite large so I guess it makes sense 10% for partnership this is going to fund the bounty program and build partnership with other audio video websites slash mobile apps 20% is going to the foundation 30% for the ecosystem incentives to pay out people the use of the proceeds for the investment, 50% is to research and development, 25% is to marketing and promotion, of which this video fits into that, 15% is for the legal auditing compliance, and 10% for general staff. And then it goes into the experience behind all the team members, and of course legal jargon. But with that out of the way, you can join the bounty simply there. Check out all the news pieces here. NASDAQ, Bitcoin Magazine, News Bitcoin, TechCrunch, Bloomberg, Business Insider. By the way, one of the first questions in the interview is going to be talking about series funding, which their parent company was able to achieve millions and millions of dollars through that as well. So these guys have definitely quite experienced in Silicon Valley. Without further ado, boom. Now, there is one thing I was looking into the parent company, and that was there was, I believe it was Series B funding. Uh, mm -hmm. There was quite a hefty chunk raised there. Now, yeah, it's all over the places. Yeah. Obviously, when that comes into mind with Silicon Valley and all these Series D funding, the question comes to mind: Why blockchain in particular? Yeah, I think uh, the I think our partner company is doing pretty great in the private equity part. I would say. One thing we are think of because we have been in this uh, industry for quite some time. It's about two and a half years. I mean, our company is doing great, but we also see some of the problems in the existing, uh, especially the for us, it's mostly in the digital podcast industry. So, for example, right? So, uh, I would say you are like a content creator. Probably you are aware of some of the issues. So, for example, right? Most content creators they spend a lot of time, like like what we are doing now, so spend a lot of time and efforts into producing valuable content, and then they put on some uh, platform, let's say YouTube, or uh, even for our cast box. But uh, it's very hard, at least my understanding is very hard for them to, to, to get anything like valuable out of it. Other, you, you may have some fans, you have some recognition, right? But you also, everybody has to make a living, right? So you also have to, uh, they have a lot of difficulty trying to monetize this thing. Right, and especially the recent like top, years. Top, yeah, so that's one thing, to help uh, content creators to monetize the, the, the content. The second of all is also 
for the consumers, for the users as well, right? So let's say I'm a regular YouTube viewer, or I'm like just listen to CastBox daily, and I also engage with this platform a lot. So I'm providing a lot of contribute, actually contributions. Like I, I, I share, I, I comment, I like, I just download a flag, but all of this is spent is valuable time from me, which I would have, I could engage in some other activity, but I'm putting my value here. So uh, we want to like quantify this value and make sure that the, the whole point is whoever can contribute to this whole ecosystem, they should be rewarded uh, fairly proportionally, not only the big guys like YouTube. Right. Was there any profound individual on the team who has, I don't know, invested in Bitcoin and decided, oh, wow, you know, they, they, they made quite yeah. a bit or they were part of a previous ICO? Oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm I'm definitely one big uh, crypto hardcore fans. I would say I I used to before this uh, role I work I used to work at Facebook as a research scientist working on building the next generation uh, distributed uh, networking protocols. That's how I even got into this place because I did my I did my PhD study in uh, distributed systems like a peer to peer networking protocols, which probably you closely related to Bitcoin, which I, that's how I heard about it and then did some research. And then after that, it was like uh, 2016, I have some bunch of guys doing some mining, the mostly for Ethereum and uh, Repo, actually some Repo as well. For, for, well, we still did that on, with our GPUs, so that's good old times. And then later, I think since pretty much uh, one and a half years, uh, or two years ago, I kind of like starting and finding, oh, this exciting this is like a new new world out there so as kind of like uh, whenever i finish my day daily work i was just research more and more into this and that's going to be one point i think i'm spending more time on crypto than what my regular job at facebook right. so i think that's my tipping point i said okay i need to quit this and <laughs> do something in this field so i'm one of this and also for our the Castbox CEO, uh, CTO, he started mining Bitcoin on his uh, actually laptop, uh, 2013. Wow. So unfortunately, he sold most of his uh, old Bitcoins at like, I, I don't know, like $100 or something. But uh, he's also one big fan. And also for our, uh, we have a technique uh, called uh, Xiao Chang. He, he used to be a CTO for a Chinese uh, fintech company in, in Beijing. I think they did the probably that either the first or the one of the first uh, company to use uh, distributed ledger te technology. It's kind of like a blockchain, but for enterprise. So after he finished that project, he, he wants to venture into this full field full time. So that's and our current CTO for Content Box he used to work for this company called uh, Five Miles. I don't know, have you heard about it? It's Five kind of like miles. the top. No top top uh, peer to peer uh, kind of like a eBay but uh, like a localized eBay for the city of five miles range so they also launched a blockchain initiative called cyber miles actually no I I, I do think I used it yeah cyber okay miles. yeah yeah, yeah that... it's pretty popular in the US especially in Texas now that you mention it yeah five miles I think I used it once once right before I left okay. for, for Europe but that's cool yeah, that's yeah. cool. So, okay. I mean, looking through the team, we got some big names here. You've worked with Facebook. The CEO worked with uh, Google Beijing and uh, oh, uh, Dublin, Google, and Google Japan. He worked for three locations. Three locations. Around the world. Jeez. But all, it's all Google. Now, what was the switch from these companies? You shared your story, at least a little snippet of it, a snippet of it, because these are big names, and of course, everybody has their reasons. But why did everybody choose to go from Google, from Facebook, from uh, the, these finance hedge funds? into this company was there any because you shared that you wanted to go because you just enjoyed blockchain technology what about let's say the ceo what was her story i think uh, we we had known each other for about two years so i think uh, uh after caspark became quite viral so she wants to set up the first overseas office in the silicon valley that's how we like start talking and he was asking she was asking oh what are you up to these days i was just saying a blockchain. I think uh, that's the next uh, big thing. It's like uh, to me, it's like a Web 3.0. It's like okay, because for Castbox, it's always trying to be uh, technology driven. Because if you look at the, all the uh, all the existing competitors, 
they, they have been there long before us. Some of them even been there like more than 10 years, and we've right. only been here since uh, 2016. So we're pretty new to this field. 17 so mil. Yeah, so. Not bad. Uh, yeah, 17 so, mil in two years, that's that's good exponential growth. I mean, we're yeah. seeing that a lot so, with technology companies. They're beating out all these competitors that, you know, they've been here for 10, 15 years, and then suddenly the next big thing, uh-oh, it just exploded yeah, exponentially. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty so crazy. So that's why Renee, our current CEO, she's also just always trying to stay, you know, to the latest technology to see if there's any benefit we can leverage and integrate into the CastBox existing system. So that's why we always keep ahead of our competitors. All right. So let me ask you a question. From a personal point of view, what is okay. your favorite part about working there at the company? Oh, it's like uh, it's like perfect. Like it's like uh, I paid to do what I enjoy most because from Facebook, I, after I quit Facebook, I stay at home just doing some research. Right. I, I don't know what what are my next steps to do. I don't have acne income, so I just sell my Facebook stock just to stay flow. So for now, it's like I'm doing the same thing, and also I can I can immediately integrate into Castbox, which. I mean, we just launched our crypto wallet, which can be used immediately by 16 million users. I think that's probably the same level of users for all the crypto users in the world, probably. It's crazy. Similar. I, mean, I don't know, maybe like 20 million users worldwide. So first of all, you can I do whatever I love for most, and I got get paid but at the same time, which I don't didn't before I joined. And second of all, you can feel the impact immediately because wherever I notice something. And we talked, we, we decided to, let's say, launch this wallet. We just, I think we just finished it like within one month or one and a half months and then just launch it. So we can see immediate impact. And also for me, because I'm a long term, long term uh, holder into this space. So I, I'm going to in crypto for like any foreseeable future. So that's also one way for me to make some uh, contribution to the greater community. All right. Like so you're a long time, to, 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 you're a long time believer. Uh, like me, you're, you're in this space for quite a while. What do you think personally about two things? They're both interrelated. The current crash, as everybody's calling it, that's okay. been going on for okay. the past couple yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. And with regards to the current crash, launching the company and getting everybody involved right now at this moment. What do you think? Is it going to improve the situation? Do you think it's a... Uh, mucky situation. What's your thoughts on it? Okay, first of all, uh, let's first address this so-called crash. Okay, yeah, it dip a little bit from the all-time high of, uh, let's say, Bitcoin, like end of uh, middle of uh, last December, it was right. almost here, like a twenty thousand. For now, it's around. Yeah, it's a little bit lower, but if you look at any reasonable time horizon, let's say one year at this time, what is the what is the Bitcoin price, or even for the one year even ago, it's a 2016 or even 2015. You look at the, if you look at the longer time horizon, you can see this this trend is always, I mean, it always go up to two scales and then fall back one scale. So right. I think we are, we have, it's not the first time we see this trend and it's not the first uh, like death announcement from the media saying this Bitcoin is dead. So we have been seeing this, it's, it's just normal. Uh, to me, it's, uh, it doesn't bother me at all. And a second part of why we enter in the, this space, because we are trying to look at the long term, right? We are not trying to here just to raise some right. ICO and then, and then just make us a few of our, our founders rich, and then we can enjoy the beach and the rest of our lives with Lambos, whatever. Yeah. So it, 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 it just we, for me, I I, I, I very I rarely look at the market price, whatever because. I mean, just to me, if you are here for the long term and uh, look at the volatility, it's not the best best uh, way to spend my time. I think even I, I, I kind of like the bear market more yeah. because I think uh, people even, you know, they forgot all the memes and uh, I think the people have more incentives to just stay put and do some actual work. Are there any vesting periods? And if so, how long are the vesting periods for, for the equity? Oh, you, you mean for content box, right? I think for all the core team members, we all definitely have some lockout. I think if I remember correct, I think it's uh, for the, there's a the pool that reserved for the team, for the development and research efforts. I think it's, uh, I think in total, there's going to be released 
uh, in the next four years. Okay. So we, I think every quarter or something, we release one sixteenth. If I just maybe not exact number, but you get the idea. It's right. Just, uh, it's similar to the, the other standards. Okay. Yeah. Four years. That's good. Uh, would you be concerned with the competition, or maybe what you're seeing for the next six months, or maybe some technological problems? What do you think is the biggest point that might have some difficulties with it? I think for me, I think the biggest concern for me, uh, uh, frankly, for this project is not my uh, my team or, or the whatever technology uh, problem we have to solve because this, we are passionate about it and we have a proven record record of solving on those. So I think the, the, the most concerning part for me is after, because we haven't gone to exchange yet. So after we get listed on exchanges, because a lot of people I think are probably going to uh, go to the exchange and buy and sell our tokens. So that's some part is kind of like, a, I mean, we can do a little bit of control, but it is, I think, not much we can do to, to control all this price. I, th- I think, and also you mentioned, right? So in short term, of course, the market is going to oscillate and uh, the price could up and down. So I think the most concerning part is for our, all our ex- existing uh, uh, users and also our investors. Because, I mean, right. I think they, they care about a lot about the price that, that you and me do, right? So I, I just want to, if there's anybody that's invested or that, like our current users get our tokens. So at, at time as the price go down a little bit, I mean, I, I, I'm just saying, don't worry too much about it. I mean, it's, we, if we execute this project well and we need all of your help and uh, we can move this project forward well, I mean, I, I'm pretty confident this price eventually, I mean, look at the long term, it's going to, it's definitely going to go up. So that's the part of what I'm mostly concerned is because it's out, it's pretty much uh, outside of our own control. You see what I mean? Right, right. So I don't, so because people, because people like look at the daily price and then they will just always say, oh, what are you guys doing? Like, why is this down? Right. So it's kind of like a distraction from my actual work. It, it, yeah. Now, has the series funding affected this in any profound way, this particular project? Because it's the parent company and the same part part of the team's working with that, of course. And that was, I believe, in April, if I read correctly, or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, oh, yeah. uh, has it affected this project in a profound way? Uh, I, I I would say somewhat, but it, of course, it definitely in a positive way because. If the, our partner company got a lot of like media attention and also is uh, raising a lot of like uh, uh, capitals from uh, top traditional VCs, so that give also give a, a lot of uh, like <coughs> confidence and also uh, reputation within the, our crypto project because a lot of people, especially like uh, investors or new users, they will look at oh, have you guys. Uh, down something remarkable before. They also want to look at the track record. So I think that, yeah, it's very helpful for our, at least, uh, at least for the fundraising, it will definitely help because if the if a project and the, the, all the core team members, they have been doing pretty well outside this community before, so that's also a huge plus, I would say. All right. So with this, with, with this role you currently have, what was your greatest achievement so far with whatever tasks you had or greatest addition to the project? Oh, for me, I think, uh, I think the, the, the greatest so far I've uh, been like, uh, I, for me, and uh, I think we only have a handful of uh, full-time blockchain engineers. So we just uh, build the whole backend wallet from scratch. And it's built on, built on Ethereum, and now it's just launched and uh, available to 16 million users. So that's pretty, to me, it's, uh, I mean, that's the part I'm proud of so far. Are you in any way concerned about what's going to happen with the future of Ethereum and the upcoming updates with it, uh, since it is uh, based on Ethereum? Yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, the, of course, because we we, are, we have so many users and and also for the content con- consumption is 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 kind of like a frequent activity. I don't know about you, but I, I think I probably listen to podcasts like quite a few times a day, and also listen to some uh, music and then watch some videos. It's not like I'm I'm doing some uh, buying some house and then do this on a blockchain. So the right. activity is more frequent. S- uh, second, we have uh, millions of users, so. 
if all of them are going to, after our tokens, is fully integrated into this app, if they all stay active, I think uh, Ethereum at this stage probably is not a good solution for us. The only reason we're doing it for now is it's pretty much the only uh, smart contract and the platform out there that's that's mature, I mean, kind of stable. So we are also, because of this concern, we are also looking at the, the latest uh, technologies and uh, development for the public chains. So let's say EOS and also look at some uh, like uh, Thunder. I don't know, have you heard about I've it? I've heard a little bit about it, yeah. Yeah, we also talked to these guys, EOS, Thunder, and also uh, Zilliqa. So we are keeping an eye on the, whatever the, the best scalable technology over there. And uh, when the traffic from our users starts to pick up, we can hopefully we can smoothly transfer, transition to, into other, the, whatever the best technology over there. Right. Now, with that, I know it obviously takes a lot more expertise and time and management to create your own blockchain instead of basing it on something like that. And it is easier when you do launch for exchanges. They're looking, hey, it's an ERC-20. Cool, we can yeah, copy paste. Journey, so. so they don't have to change much. Other than the ERC-20 exchange option, what were some of the decisions of why not to make your own personal blockchain? I think we, we don't at this moment, we don't rule out that option. It's one definite option we will also keep in mind because uh, our strengths, our strengths is not to, to build whatever the latest scalable or, or private or low fee uh, blockchain out there. That's not our core strengths. So our core strengths is like we have a, <clears throat> we have a huge user base and also we have, a, we all have this uh, founders from all the proven record uh, Big companies, so we are technically competent. So we want to to enable tech, this technology into our ecosystem. So if we can leverage whatever is out there, public technology, public blockchains, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. But if 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 when the later the users all come aboard and it's good yeah. because when everybody's selling, the extremely wealthy individuals. With, with stocks, with oil. I mean, as we've seen over the past hundred years, if you've been studying, most of them are saying, well, buy when everybody's selling. And I'm not saying just yeah. about investment, but if you're looking into new jobs, which crypto is bringing a lot of people, we can get better deals. If companies' stocks or cryptos are going yeah. a, down a little bit, cool, okay, well, if I'm going for equity, 1% or half a percent, whatever it is, you're able to get better bonuses, if you do, of course, the proper research. And mm -hmm. mainly the people who are just involved in it for the money, they're kind of gone at the moment. Or yeah. at least they're selling off, which is kind of like, okay, we get some time to relax, actually focus on the work, doesn't matter. And if the price goes up, cool, cool, we're making cool. money. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it doesn't matter. If it goes up, I'm happy. If it goes down, I just buy more. And it doesn't matter to me. I mean, of course. It's both good. Good. If it goes up, so. it's a bonus. It's it's already a cool yeah. party, but it just gets even cooler. You're inviting the VIP guests. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check out the links down in the description below, and we shall see you guys later. Let me know what you thought about this in your comments. I read most, so...